That's the name of today's talk. You're probably curious because the theme for the month of May from Centers for Spiritual Living is care for the poor. The value of the month is compassion. And today's talk is feed me. I can remember when my three kids were little, I would get up so early and I would run to the kitchen as fast as I could so that I could fix breakfast and have it on the table before they got up or they'd likely bite me. They were hungry. <laughs> we, I always made it. It never happened. But, <laughs> but we're considered nurturers, right? We, in fact, one time some friends of mine, had, there were a whole group of people who'd come over for a party and I had been cooking and baking for days and we had a wonderful time. And at the end of the, of the evening, one of them said to me, Maxine, you're just a big nurch. <laughs> And we all have the capacity to nurture. It's God-given. It is innate. And so as we are fed from that divine presence within us, so we just naturally must. It's just something we love to do to have that overflow to share it with other people. And we don't have to get up at 5 o'clock in order to do that. I'm talking in the morning. <laughs> So, happy Mother's Day, and I mean to everyone, certainly to all the mothers here, and the grandmothers, and everybody who nurtures a child, thank you. And everybody here has reason to celebrate Mother's Day, whether you have children or not. Where's Mackie? Huh? I said, where's Mackie? Well, see... <laughs> okay. Because we have within us that eternal divine presence, the Father, Mother, God. In, on Father's Day, I'll wish you all a happy Father's Day too. Because we have within us both the masculine feminine principle, we are nurturers, we are creators, we are co-creators. And we utilize this beautiful, loving, co-creative, intelligent process, every single one of us. And, you know, I had three children, and, and that was a very creative act, wasn't it? <laughs> but then later on, I found out there are other ways to be creative. <laughs> and, and we all get to use this creative principle in that way, however we choose to use it. Albert Einstein said, our task must be to free ourselves by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole nature and its beauty. This universal mother energy, look at all the words we have for mother. And do you, have you notice that in just about every language it starts with an M. Mm, mother, mare to see mama mommy mother madre that's both spanish and italian madre mere french mutter german mukin did i say it right anybody here chinese <laughs> mater russian matera greek of course mary maya mm. Interestingly, anybody know Mirabelle Starr? She wrote Wild Mercy, Living the Fierce and Tender Wisdom of the Women Mystics. Ooh, Anne should be here. She loves that. She says, you follow the footprints of the beloved across manifold spiritual landscapes. You catch the same ancient spicy aroma in Judaism that you have fasted, that you have tasted in Islam. Your attraction to the lush, sensuality of Hinduism does not in any way preclude the way you rest in the intellectual purity of Buddhism. Contemplating the Tao Te Ching strengthens what the Hopi elders have taught you, that the earth is alive, that she is your mother, that she is the love of your life. Isn't this great, this universal presence and energy? <laughs> Since I asked for Mackie, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, how old is Mackie now? 
He just turned 12. All right, I don't think you could hear what she said, everybody. It was, he wrote her a card that said, my love for you is, is bigger than my love for my cat, and it's bigger than the universe. I mean, who wouldn't want a Mother's Day greeting like that? Jane, that's awesome. Oh, wow. Okay. So as a parent nurtures his or her child, so we're designed to care and nurture and feed others in a healthy way. I'm just remembering a Mother's Day when I was 10 years old. Anybody remember a Mother's Day when we were 10 years old? I'd been saving my change because I wanted to buy my mother a corsage. I know a couple of you have heard this story, but I'm telling it today. <laughs> I went to see Mrs. Chadwick at Chadwick Gardens in Redonda Beach because she had a beautiful nursery and sold flowers and plants. And I was always captivated by this place when I'd ride by on my bike. And I thought, I'm going to see Mrs. Chadwick and I will buy my mother a corsage. I took everything out of my piggy bank, and I walked in, I got off my bike, walked in, and uh, she said, how can I help you, Maxine? And I said, I would like to buy a corsage for my mother for Mother's Day. Fine, what kind of corsage would you like? I would like an orchid corsage. <laughs> she said, good, let's pick one out, and so she showed me the way she could make it together. And I said, I'd like it to look like this. And uh, she said, how much did you want to spend? And I showed her, and she said, that's exactly what this one costs. And years later, she did the flowers for my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that, and my mother loved it. And uh, there are so many beautiful ways that we can honor the mother within us all and the mothers that we enjoy. Uh, whether we were raised by ideal parents or not, there is still an innate desire for us to share others with others, to feed them on some, so many beautiful levels. And it seems like the love for our own extends to the greater community when we expand our range of caring and include others in our hearts. Have you noticed that the love of one child helps us to love and embrace all children. It's something wonderful. Plato said that too. He didn't say it about children, but about grown-ups. He says, you love one beautiful being, and then you find you love all beautiful beings. And people become more beautiful to you. There is a nourishing that takes place when we bring our hearts and our souls to each other and say, oh, you're beautiful, I love you. Whether you say it out loud or not, because it's not something you would normally do on the train. But wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> at least think it. At least feel that sense of cherishing other people and knowing we all came from the same beloved. That this one loving, nurturing mother presence and energy is something that we do all share. Bless you. And when the ministry says, says that, you know, you really, you're really blessed. <laughs> I love that song, the Karen Drucker song you taught us today. Blessed be. And thank you again, Tim, for sharing. And, and you know, Ernest Holmes taught us that God is in the prayer and in the pill. So we give thanks that God is present everywhere. Christine Whitaker, who began the, the first church of religious science in Chicago, many, many years ago, would start every one of her talks with, God is in this place. And certainly God is in every place. But isn't it wonderful to remind ourselves when we come together, each bringing our consciousness of love and open-heartedness and a willingness to learn and to share and to lift each other up, that definitely God is in this place. And then when we leave here, we realize that we take it with us and somehow the lights that we are shine even more brightly. People pick up on that. They love being in community with people who recognize that the presence of love and compassion is everywhere present. And there is a real need for unconditional love. Unconditional love. Unqualified love. Love that has no beginning and no ending. Love is a synonym for God, and it's true. 
And that abides within each and every one of us. And it's met in each of us when we allow ourselves to be spiritually nourished. Each one of us is designed to be an instrument of divine love. Have you ever thought of yourself that way? An instrument of divine love. It's hard to be self-centered. It's hard to be afraid. It's hard to be caught up in yourself when you realize you're an instrument of divine love. I am that nurturing presence. And so, I'm thinking about a beautiful, beautiful thing that Paramahansa Yogananda said. A mother's love is not given to us to spoil us with indulgence, but to soften our hearts that we may in turn soften others with kindness. In India, we speak of God as Mother Divine. Every mother is a manifestation of God's unconditional love. Although human mothers can be imperfect, the Divine Mother is perfect. Mothers were created by God to show us that we are loved with or without cause. May all the sons and daughters of the world be filled with that mother affection, which is the reflection of the Divine Mother's unconditional love. And may we give that unconditional motherly love to one another so that we have peace and heaven on earth. Forget that as we allow ourselves to be fed by that internal, constant, loving presence, letting the living waters of spirit flow through us, as we allow that to take place, we cannot help but become those divine instruments of the loving presence and the compassion. And we're able to see through people's behaviors. And we're able and willing to see through differences. And we're able and willing to listen to somebody else's point of view. Imagine that. Even Are we willing to open our hearts and our minds to another point of view and not instantly say, no, this is the way that it is. If you're two, you can do that, right? How many mothers here have had two-year-olds? <laughs> yes, I can do it my myself, right? <laughs> many of you know my first son said that. And it's sort of become a mantra around here. <laughs> when we're in kingdom two, kingdom one being everything is done to me or for me, kingdom two, everything is done by me, I can do it my myself, Kingdom three, let's do this together. Kingdom four, there's no separation. I am the But in kingdom two, and we have to be there. You know we have to go through that, don't we? Because otherwise we wouldn't be developing the maturity that we need to speak our truth, to be those interdependent beings that start out with feeling like I need to be independent. Ultimately, we move to that third kingdom. And there, we move from the I can't to the I can do it myself to the let's do this together consciousness. And now we want to move into this place where we are allowing ourselves to be so deeply, sweetly fed by spirit every day, deep in our meditations, on our mantra walks, with people where we're discovering and discussing beautiful new ideas. That feeds us too, doesn't it? And then we recognize that we're, that we're building something together. We're creating something new that wasn't there before and we're feeding each other, not by our own hands. I love to cook and bake. Ah, uh, but I want to feed and be fed on a deeper level than that. I want to enjoy the company of people who are aware that we are all one, that there is no separation, 
and that we are able to celebrate our differences and realize that every flower in the garden needs to be its beautiful self, just like you and I get to be who we are and to celebrate every other person no matter how different they may look or act or worship or believe on any level at all. Ernest Holmes says, we glorify that indwelling God who is the Heavenly Father and the Cosmic Mother of us all. I want us to invite every day, every moment of every day that we can remember it, and we can remember it every moment of the day. Invite that universal love to fill us to overflowing today so we cannot help but feed, we cannot help but give, we cannot help but be that divine instrument through which that love and compassion expresses. You can find the ways to do that. It's easy. It is easy. It's not just simple. It is easy. Because when we open our hearts, we're guided and we're shown the way to make a difference in other people's lives. And there's real nourishment there. We can all, we can all become the biggest nurture, nurtures, nurtures in the world for everybody. Will you say with me, I am nurtured by spirit. I invite that, I share this divine nourishment with all who come to be fed. Next time you hear someone, even without words, say, feed me. And sometimes that request is not elegant, right? But the next time you feel or hear or sense that someone needs something, just be the one. Just see through to who they truly are. Even without a word, something can shift in everybody's consciousness. And so, my beloveds, begin us our lesson. Thank you. Thank you.